What is going on everybody? Welcome back to your rideshare classes. Today we're going to be talking about the delivery apps. Obviously a lot of options you can go for there. For the most part they're all relatively the same. Uber Eats really isn't as good anymore because Uber stopped offering the gas surcharge so it's probably the one that you would want to stay away from. But for the most part in my experience they all pay out really close to the same. But let's talk about why delivery can actually be much better than Uber and Lyft. And I actually really loved delivery as well. It wasn't something I did for a long time, but I would do it off and on because to be honest, there was days where I just didn't want to talk to people. I was feeling a little antisocial and I didn't feel like putting on my best charismatic face and having an engaging conversation. Uh, you know, delivery might be the Delivery might be what you should do if you ever go through a breakup and you need to be in your feels all day but still work. You probably don't want to be talking to people. You need that solitude and you're depressing uh, Blink-182 on. That's the days where you do delivery and you don't have to talk with people. Obviously, I'm joking to some degree, but that really was the case for me in the sense that I had days where I was just sick of Uber and I didn't want to have a bunch of people in my car that day and I didn't feel like talking to them. So those days, I would do delivery. Now, delivery can be extremely lucrative if done the right way and done the right times. And to be honest, there was a lot of times where I considered switching to it entirely, and there were a lot of times where I thought it was significantly better. The honest truth for me was, when you're talking to these people all day, it can be extremely draining. And for me, with delivery... I was able to just play my music, play my podcasts, do what I wanted to do and not have to worry about people and not have to worry about if they don't like my driving and not have to worry about if they're interested in my talking or, or ticked off at me or whatever it was. It was a lot more peaceful and a lot of times I was still making about the same amount of money. Now, trust me, it still comes with its frustrations. A lot of times the restaurants are lagged up and behind. A lot of times there's really frustrating customers. A lot of times they're a lot harder to find in apartment complexes than you might think. A lot of these apartments are tough to navigate. Every apartment has weird numbers and weird, weird letters that labels the buildings. And so finding unit 1265 can be the most maddening thing. But the more you do it, the more you get the hang of it and the easier it becomes to really understand how these places are. But initially, at least, it'll be decently frustrating for anybody. So those are really the main pros and cons of it. In the end, I feel like the money is pretty close to being the same. You can still get really good tips. Uh, you can still make 150 to 250 a day, especially on a weekend. And all that being said, having that peace of mind while you're out there, to me, a lot of times was well worth it. Now, one thing too is that with delivery, you only have to be 18, whereas for Uber and Lyft, you have to be 21. The other side of that is for delivery, you can do it on a bike. And I mean, if you're a fast enough runner, you might be able to sprint it and the app might not be able to tell. But you can do it on a bike, an electric scooter, and this is a much easier way to where now you're not even having to pay gas. And that's something that a lot of people should consider because I have a buddy that dry, uh, delivers on an electric scooter and he still makes 25 an hour every time he's out there. And a lot of times he's even quicker because he's not dealing with traffic because he's utilizing the sidewalks and the bike lanes. And so he's a lot of times making deliveries in a busier city even faster than a car would. So it is something to really consider if you are going to do delivery is that if driving a vehicle is actually the best option. Now, another side of this is grocery delivery. Obviously, Instacart, Instacart is the big one there, but there are other services now as well. Um, I think even on Postmates, you can technically do groceries as well. And for some people, this is the ultimate. I mean, if you're a, if you're a stay-at-home mom and the kids go to school from 9 to 3, and you're pretty well-versed at understanding grocery stores, and you can get in and get out and really kill someone's grocery order... People tip really big for that. 
I actually use Instacart a lot for my groceries and that's I've always tipped at least 20 or $30 because it's a very appreciative service for me. And on top of that, I absolutely hate grocery shopping. I If I grocery shop, it'll literally take me two to three hours because it takes me so long to find everything. And then there's that one random spice that I just can't seem to find. But then I'll do it on Instacart and they're, bam, you know, done in an hour. So I'm more than happy to tip big for that. And I do think that's how most people feel that use Instacart as a service. But going back to delivery, so outside of just the convenience of not dealing with the people. What I've noticed too is that a lot of times it's a lot less mileage on your car. And the reason being is because the people that are ordering food, they're generally not gonna wanna order it from 30 miles out unless it is some really bougie restaurant. And if they got the money to do that, they're probably tipping big and it's worth it. But generally the deliveries are gonna be in a lot closer of a range because people know they're paying more if they're ordering food from somewhere further out. So they're not gonna find the Panda Express 10 miles away. They're gonna find the you know unknown Chinese food place that's two miles away. Even though it's more risky, it's cheaper. So it allows you to do a lot more deliveries a lot faster. The other thing is you can a lot of times get um, multiple deliveries at once. So they'll they'll stack up your deliveries so that you know as you're dropping off, if you're going past a restaurant that someone just ordered from, you can pick up their food and then drop that off after you drop off your current delivery. So it allows you to double dip a lot, which is obviously going to be where you make the most money. It can be a little slower on days where you're waiting a while for a delivery, you know? And if you end up waiting a while for a delivery, that can be where it, it's really frustrating to do delivery services. But again, if you want to be risky, you could do Uber, you could do Lyft, and then you could do something like Postmates as well. And you could run three apps at once to really maximize your earnings. Or what you could do is if you're mainly doing Postmates or a delivery service, you could supplement it with Uber or Lyft, where you try to do primarily deliveries, but then you turn on Uber if it ever feels like it's just being really slow. And if you end up getting rides before deliveries, you just end up doing that. But anyways, uh, that's our section on Lyft and delivery. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are crushing it out there and really benefiting from these tips and tricks. And I look forward to talking to you guys soon.